A few weeks ago, I posted a video converting my 3D printer to an engraving tool. And that video seemed to be very appreciated. So with that in mind, I'm converting the CR-10S to a straight up CNC milling machine that will allow you to cut out things from wood Let me run through the components and the changes that has to be made. To your surprise, we don't have to physically reinforce the CR-10. We will have to make some minor modifications in the Marlin firmware. Uh, but let's begin here. The motor mount I did reinforce since last time. Uh, this little dinky brush motor has play in the set axis. Uh, so that's why we reinforced the motor mount and we replaced it with a big brushless motor from a RC car. Uh, that's going to be controlled with this 70 amp speed controller and this servo tester will enable us to adjust the RPMs of the motor and all of this is getting powered from this old 3D printer power supply that is 12 volts 40 amps. I literally just took whatever I had to my disposal. This may not be, in fact they are definitely not optimal for this operation. The goal is to have everything as rigid as you possibly can and this is about how stiff that motor mount is going to be. Obviously you want to make sure you tighten these V-slot wheels as well as tighten the belt. And you want to do the same on the bed at the bottom. This is now super stable but obviously we can't ask for too much from a 3D printer that isn't supposed to be a CNC mill. The fact that this does it without any physical modifications is just... It's absolutely insane how YouTube promotes the chocolate layer video. That video is going bananas and, and it's kind of freaking me out. But that's not to the point. Literally every third... Literally every third comment is a question asking where I'm from and if I'm Swedish. And I've, I, I just found that too funny. Alright, I parked. So I realized there might be a lot of new people. I am from Sweden even though I look Italian, I've heard. So now you can spread the message that I'm the Swedish boy. This here is all the not so expensive components that you will need to transform your 3D printer to a CNC mill. And if you want to reverse the direction of the motor, just swap any of the two bullet connectors. The motor wire continues down to the speed controller and the signal wire gets uh, connected to the servo tester. The power cables to the power supply, uh, some uh, mains. Okay, here we are, the first step of the way. The electronics box of the CR-10S just gets plugged in via USB. And just a word of caution before we continue here, if you aren't ready to see your 3D printer break, then don't do this. If you're not going to kill it messing up the firmware, you are going to kill it mounting this humongous motor on it. There are two things you need. One is the Arduino software, the second one is the CR-10S stock firmware, and both of which will be linked down below. So navigate yourself to the Marlin, should be down here and open that up and that will present you all the code, the entire firmware and make sure you go to sketch and go to include library, 
manage libraries and type in U8GLIB and download the, if, if you scroll all the way down, you will see this installation. I've already installed it. Just make sure you have that library installed. Then you can head over to tools and make sure that you have the Mega 2560 activated here, as well as the processor tab down here. And now we are ready to go to the configuration tab and click Control F on your keyboard to bring up the search and search for planes. That will show you the deactivated code of the CNC workspace planes by indicating that you have the two slashes. Just simply remove the two slashes and that will activate and allow you to use the G2 and G3 commands to operate in these planes. And that's pretty much it. That's all you have to do. And now you are ready to verify and compile into the firmware of the CR10S. Now we just need to generate the G code that the 3D printer will be able to read. And we can do that by using Fusion 360. So let's sketch up something very basic. A 50 by 50 square, a 10 millimeter diameter hole and a funny shape. That, that's perfect. We can compare the dimensions after it's been cut. And now you want to go to cam and I've done this a million times. I'm pretty much on autopilot at this point. First you want to go to setup and move the pointers to this corner here. Then you want to go to stock and stock offset mode. You want to change to no additional stock. Click OK. Then you can go to 2D and 2D contour. Then select the tool, add the new tool, uh, make it whatever diameter you have. I think I'm using a three millimeter. Click OK, click OK. Coolant should be disabled. Now go to every single feed rate and change that to three, four hundred millimeter per minute. And that's going to be your feed rate, how fast the through the printer head is moving. I found 400 to work OK. Now move over to the geometry tab and select all the parameters of your object, just like so. Now move over to heights. Clearance height should be stock top, five mil, bottom height stock bottom move over to passes uh, sideways compensation change that to right conventional milling now move over to linking and do a ramp and this is probably the one setting that you want to have that you probably could experiment with i found 0.8 and 1 mil to work pretty well and just to show you just to give you a representation of what it means is that for every lap it will move down 0.8 mil and if we edit and make that larger, let's do two mil, you will see there will be less red lines. It will move down even further. So this can be really useful if you have a very thick and dense wood, you might wanna have a lower number to make it possible for the CR10 to, to actually remove all the wood instead of just grinding into the wood. I hope, I hope that makes sense. Final step is where it generates the G code and there's gonna be a hypercube for Fusion 360 CPS file in the description. And you wanna to go to setup and open folder and you wanna move over that CPS file to this and that's gonna show up here. And you wanna select the hypercube for Fusion 360. You wanna have the allow helical moves to no and then click post and, and that's, that's it. Square, hole, funny hole. Here is the square hole, funny hole file and we're gonna right click and edit with the notepad and you wanna go to line 17 and insert M211S0 and you wanna click Control S to save. Now this will cut it. A big shout out to Tech2C, he has been helping me figure out this on the CR10 so make sure you check him out. Gee, I'm a dope. That, that looks perfect. Absolutely perfect. The, too bad the moron that is myself forgot to dial down the ramping and that's why it was slamming down into the wood instead of gradually ramping down. Uh, let's fix that.
Wow, unfortunately I did not have a DSLR going, but that tool is absolutely embedded in the wood. It was just screaming, so I stopped everything and it seems like the motor overheated because it's super hot and that made the PLA mount soften up and, and yeah, well, this is what happened. Ouch, Jesus, that's hot. Man's not hot. Everything else seems fine, the speed controller is cool and the power supply is cool. Um, well, what about this? the next morning so my brilliant move to solve the situation is to add a fan and this should work because the motor is just moving in the x axis so it should always have airflow All right, everything seems to be running smoothly. We are on attempt number four, and I set up a fan, a 24 volt fan, to cool the motor down during operation. So hopefully that's gonna work out. But it, I, I feel it's highly dependent on what material you're cutting, and I feel like this is very dense furu, whatever that's in English. Uh, then I also have this plywood here, that's uh, Geron. And uh, I believe that this is gonna be way easier to cut than uh, this plywood here uh, and it will be really interesting watching how it cuts acrylic uh, because that might be even harder I'm not sure let's do it there's no problem with heating on the X and Y motor that's great. It failed before it could finish due to lack of double-sided tape, but that piece looks amazing. The edges, even though I just did some light sanding, is actually looking really sharp, and the dimensions are dead center. Let's say goodbye to this plywood and hello to this one. A little longer than a few minutes later. Just like all my projects not going according to plan, this, uh, this proves to be not that easy. Here is where the CR10 is just not structurally sufficient to cope with the harder areas of plywood. Not particularly this area, but this area here, the set axis, which would allow movement of the cutting tool, that adds up each lap and eventually fails. I never thought I would be outplayed by plywood, but here we are. It's not that I haven't been able to cut things, it's just been so unpredictable with all the dark lines that tends to be way harder to cut. So we are doing the switch to MDF board, which you can see is uniform, so we don't have the darker lines. I've done some testing and it seems to be way easier to cut. And it's 18 millimeters thick, which will work way better for the project that I had in mind. This is why I wanted so badly for the CR10 to be the printer that I would convert to a CNC because it does have a medium sized build plate which would allow you to make stuff like this. This is a straight up copy from DIY Perks headphone stand and I made one myself so I could modify and change a couple of parameters. Obviously I will not be able to release the files. If you want to make this you will have to purchase plans from DIY Perks. This is going to be a challenge. It consists of four of these wooden parts and three of these acrylic parts. If we highlight all of them, you can see there's also a room for LED lights which will allow the acrylic parts to light up.
looking at the acrylic, they are exactly the same size. I swear to God, it's perfect. Oh, very nice. The LEDs are at the bottom, kind of resting against the acrylic together with the controller board that allows me to adjust all the colors. But here it is, a solid headphone stand. And I'm not just saying that, it really is heavy. Consisting of four MDF pieces and three acrylic pieces entirely CNC'd by a 3D printer. I think it's safe to say that the CR10 is putting all the other CNC machines to shame. I'm so happy it turned out so well. I really didn't think, in the beginning of this video, I obviously had a lot of problems and I really didn't think I would be able to cut anything useful. And now seeing it being able to cut wood and acrylic with no major problems, not overheating, it does it fairly quickly. Okay, I shouldn't say quickly. The total cutting time was more than 10 hours. Two hours for each wood piece and one and a half hours for each acrylic piece. So it's seriously not fast, but it did manage to do it. I just sincerely hope you found today's video interesting. It did take a while to make, uh, but I will link all the components in the description below. And if you just have a second to like this video, that helps me out a ton. So thanks very much for that and have an awesome day. Bye.